now, this is very exciting because they're filming this, which is why you all are going to teach this session today, and I am not going to teach this session. You ready? All right, what did you take away from this morning's keynote session? Teamwork. Teamwork, okay. Is that working for you in your affiliated groups? Sure, yeah. Okay. It's all right. This is yes. We'll go over this. It's yeah. a basic classroom. Room. This yeah. is yes. Yeah. This is no. Okay? And if you don't participate, this is going to be a long 40 minutes <laughs> for me <laughs> and you. All right? Well, that's wonderful. We are going to have a little bit of fun. They gave me the topic. This is kind of the topic that some of you may have been through before. So I guess being the old hat around the place, I got this topic. Um, but it is rather an important one. And we can't do strategic planning in the real sense in 40 minutes. It just isn't happening. And true strategic planning is specific for every organization. So we're going to hit some basic high points, hopefully leave you with some thoughts and some things that you can take back. Because as we go through this, I expect to and I hope to hear some real loud groans. Because then I'll know that you're already seasoned in this a little bit. But hopefully we will have a little bit of fun with it. And we're glad that all of you are here today, and I think we're going to have a little bit of fun. And I'm glad to see some of my counterparts that are on the board that are probably going to go back and report about how this session went, so it's going to be kind of exciting. All right. You chose this session. I know none of you got put in here because you're just the third person on the committee, right? And they're like, what? You're the low person on the ball. You get this session, right? Right? This is yes. Yes. Okay. This is no. Okay. There we go. I chose it. Okay, thanks Rita, you're a good girl. I like all my fellow teachers in here, my fellow committee oh, members, yeah. board leaders, all right, people that have done carrying on the work we started. So we're going to go with a little bit of a different sort of plan. They had this theme set up, so we're going to go with that and kind of change it up a little bit to give it more of a, uh, an approach to that. So we're going to talk about an itinerary. How many of you have ever been on a trip before or a cruise before? All right, good deal. Was it an easy thing, a fun thing? Did you have a good time? Yeah. Did you just all of a sudden show up and walk on a boat and take off? No. Really? I've, I've only done one before and boy, first of all, deciding where to go was almost unbelievably hard to do. Now, not for me because I'm like, I'm like uh, not a warm weather person, like I got to stay fully clothed and I want to like not worry about all this stuff. So Alaska was easy for me, but then when I just decided Alaska, there were numerous amounts of those that were involved. And then I figured, okay, we decided on that, we chose the ship, we chose the dates, and then, oh my gosh, I didn't realize how much documentation it required, not just passports, because we were, you know, going out of the United States in order to do the Vancouver and all of that part, but you have to fill out all these forms, and you have to get approval, and then you find out your husband uh, can't find his passport, and we're like three weeks out from leaving on the trip, and then you have to go through all that extra work to get caught up for that. And then when you think you're ready to go and the boat says you're legal, you're going to get on, it's all going to go, then they're like, now you've got to plan all these excursions before you ever get on the boat. What are we going to sign up for? Who's going to go? Limited space. How much is it going to cost? What well, sounds like the most fun that people are going to attend? So, you ever been through that process? Mm -hmm. And some of the fun is the planning of the trip, if you really get into it in the anticipation. But there's nothing really that's as fun, I think, as the first thing is you just actually get there. And then the trip starts, right? And no matter what happens, the trip has started, whether it's good or bad, right? You're just like, here we go, and it's coming apart. So we're going to kind of go along that theme. Okay, but any good class, any good educational aspect starts out with a quiz. So here is your quiz question. I would like each of you to write the correct or the most correct, the best job you can, and answer this question right here. What is the purpose of an alumni group? If it's been a while since you've taken a test, you can start your answer with, the purpose of an alumni group is. <laughs> you need something?
No one looking around, right? <laughs> Nobody checking on your neighbor, because I don't know the answer either. No, my friend do. She's trying to say I'm cheating. Either. Oh, no, no, no. She's trying to say Okay. Where's your answer, John L? Oh, he's tight. He's oh, yeah, you got it on an iPad. I forgot. He's, oh, he's totally electronic. Okay. Do all of you have an answer? Okay. You want to check your work? Do I need to ask you to hand it to someone else to check, or you, are we going to trust that you're going to check your work really well? Is there a correct answer? No. No. Well, according to the Arkansas Alumni Association, there kind of is. Or at least there is a definition that has been set before you. Now, what you take from that and what you do with each of your groups certainly does vary in order for you to be a successful group. But let's just see how you did. So, um, anybody want to share their answer? All right, let's start right back here. You, what do you mean you don't mind being wrong? Let's go forward with a little positivity here. Okay. Okay, well, I think the alumni group keep keeping alumni excited about the university and keeping them involved with the university because excited alumni equals excited community, excited community equals exciting upcoming students, which helps your university get more prestigious. What do you think? Good. Worthy! What do you think? All right! All right, who else? Got one? Great. But, uh, engage local alumni members. Now there is somebody that's short to the point. <laughs> engage local alumni. Anybody else? Got one over here. Yes, ma'am. Provide scholarships. Provide scholarships. Okay. I'll agree with that too. Who else? Promote awareness and recruit students. Promote awareness and increase students. Okay. To foster, to spread goodwill of uni the University of Arkansas, attract students and have a forum for alumni to communicate and network. Communicate and network is another addition. Okay, great. You want to throw one? Okay. Uh, yeah, I had that it's the, sort of the place for people with shared interests to give back to the university and help to ensure the success of future students, graduates, and programs. Okay. Lots of definitions. Anybody else? John? To, to maintain the connection with the university and enhance lifelong fellowship through collaboration networking. Wow. Did you write that or did you look that up on that little fancy tab? You still win. All right, good job. I got a couple more. Come on. Some more definitions, a little bit different, a little bit tweaks. All right, there we go. Um, in addition to networking of current and future alumni, uh, I think one of the things I've really grown from this is. Uh, Awareness of the collegiate rankings, not just sports. Okay. Plastic, you know, achievements um, many of us are not aware of. Absolutely. I think that's great. It's one of the things I really appreciate when we're in a board meeting and we get those updates about what's really going on on campus. It's, a, it's just really uplifting to hear the amazing things that the university is accomplishing. Anyone else want to share something? Another point that's being brought out. Yes, ma'am. I don't think this has been brought up. I can't remember. <laughs> Provide activities to engage alumni okay. in your area. Okay, there you go. All right, got a couple more. Somebody I'll else? I'll give you one. It's what everybody's been saying, but it is to promote the university. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? It's looking like a group ready to cruise. <laughs> All right, well, we will go there. And this then for you is. This is actually the definition set about in some of the materials that you, some of your counterparts may be seeing today about just the refreshed and the sort of rehash and sort of brought back out definition of what it is. To promote, some of the words you've used, to increase alumni participation, engagement, that's a great word that we heard a lot of ways around, alumni and, and also the students. It's not always about people that have already left the university, but those that are currently here, interaction, opportunities and then we don't want to forget about this word right here membership okay so that while that's a simple definition and some of you gave a lot of definitions that were similar to that this is truly what's out there and probably in some of the other sessions they may be going over some of this but I think it it really is important for us to sort of know what the purpose is that there is sort of a defined purpose and I think all of you have a really great feeling for what that is so, is the group that you work with, and I know 
we're used to hearing chapters and now we have affiliate groups and we have regional groups we have all these things so I may sort of flip back and forth with my terminology but basically is your group whatever your group is everybody that's active with your group all aboard with this type of message with this being the purpose of your group because is this strictly a social message No. because if it is then it, your group has maybe a different or people who are thinking of joining your group or maybe the audience that's out there may be thinking it's a social organization and while that may be a component it's not the entire message of the group is it Okay, so when your group gets together, what's the plan? Where are you going? How are you deciding what you're going to do? The first thing you're going to have to make sure that you've done is clarify why are we getting together? And what you should always keep in mind is what is the purpose? Knowing that your overall purpose is the one we just talked about. At least if you're following sort of the guidelines and the reason we're here as a volunteer group to get together, that should be in your background, right? It's not just a purpose to get together to have a place to root the hogs on, right? We can support the hogs, being Razorbacks, in a lot of other ways than just athletically, right? Okay. So clarify the purpose of your organization. And we uh, have some copies of some things. You can look at these if you want to go back over them or we can talk about specifics. I think one of the toughest things, and it's been touched on, and I know there's a financial session today and there's a lot of other things, is that in these times, prioritizing your resources is one of the toughest and most critical things that you have to do. What are the resources that you have available to your groups? Okay, the alumni association, meaning their staff. What else? Okay. The volunteers, absolutely critical part, right? What other type of resources do you have to account for? Fundraising. Money, right? How, how much money do we have to do what we want to do? If it's scholarship, then we, you still have to have money to make money, generally, don't you? You can't just promote a program and draw scholarships. So it's people, it's finances, it's the volunteer people, it's the folks and alumni here on campus that are supporting you. So your resources, you have to know, you can't prioritize them though if you don't know what they are. So if you haven't you know, come together and determined what are our most valuable resources, then how can you prioritize what are we going to use the most? And I think that's one of the things, if you're feeling a little iffy about all this restructure, that's one of the ways that the restructure is going to help the most. It's not going to make everybody's group function at the same way. You're going to be able to take what's really unique about your group and focus on that and move forward from there. So knowing your resources. Talk about your environment. My guess is not any one of your affiliated groups has the same sort of feeling or environment that you work in. You may meet at different organizations or different locations. You may meet in people's homes. Some of you may meet at local venues. Some of times you have events at probably high schools. Things like that. And also there's the sort of environment of the feel of an organization or a group. You ever remember being the first time you've ever been to a meeting or a new group or joined a new organization or a new club or even a new job? That first time you walk in the ambiance or whatever. You, we always have to keep in mind our environment when we're setting up these events, when we're setting up our meetings, because you've got to remember what it's like to be the first timer. Because when you've been the person that's there a long, 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 long time, of course it's comfortable, right? You shake in everybody's hand. You know everybody's name. You know where the restroom is. You know how this works. You know how to go through the food line. You know all these things. And I think that's one way we have to really be remembering as we're setting up our plans is putting our focus on being the new person and making them be involved, right? Because we know as volunteer people, volunteers don't stick around if they don't have a purpose, right? Probably all of you though have a purpose and you feel like you are involved and you feel like you are useful and resourceful or you wouldn't be here, right? It's getting new people in, okay? And then dealing with change and transition. Anybody feel change and transition happening right now? <laughs> Good thing and tough thing. Okay. What are your biggest fears about changes and transitions? I think, may I be specific to some of the Absolutely. I, it's now? perfectly fine. I think we are concerned um, about how we're going to continue to 
to keep our group going. Okay. How we're going to continue to recruit volunteers, membership, and scholarships because we do get a scholarship too. So I think those are some of our fears okay. as to how we're going to stay organized and continue to go forward and promote the university and everything we've talked about from here. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else? Yes. Speaking of the treasurer of my chapter, the, well, we've got to close our checking account and move it to an account in Fayetteville that's already been set up. We're losing control. And I happen to okay. be a CPA who's a control freak. So. <laughs> <laughs> Besides that, we're losing our checks and have a Razorback print about it. <laughs> and we're new. I've only used three of them. Oh. <laughs> So sometimes change is a little bit frightening and, and control is a tough thing. Hopefully, you know, that you feel like you're losing control, but hopefully you're gaining something else in, in the reason for doing that. And I think when you feel like we're trying to do this and this and this and this and this, that's when you've got to stop and go back to this right here. Not only prioritize your resources, but say, of all the things we can do, what are the things we, we are going to do? Because we cannot all do every single possible thing. That's why we're allowing with these changes, you as individual groups, to focus on the things that you're best able to do and to do those things well. And we're not going to expect you to do the same 10 things that every other group does and then be ranked against those. So as much as we always all, I think, when we're in organizations that we love and really want to support, want to do everything, sometimes the hard thing is cutting it down to what can we really do, you know? What really can we do with what we have right now and able to make it grow? And maybe it's not have a scholarship every year. Maybe it's do a scholarship every third year. Or if it's focus on volunteers, maybe it's do volunteer training and develop our base of volunteers for a while. You know, there's things that you can focus on because you can't be great at everything all the time. And you can't use all the same people all the time or those people get burned out and no, no people that are coming in see a reason that they can fit in. We have to be able to be a little bit flexible. Hey, anyone else? I think this is free space. You should feel comfortable in here discussing. And this is what we're here for is to talk. And I want this to be your session, not mine. Yes. Can I say something positive from yes. this transition? The thing that I felt when I read the PowerPoint was this is going to make it easier for me to recruit new board members. We hope because so. Because we are making it easier. Because we started our chapter re recolonize, whatever. And, and it's, you know, it, it had, we've had a lot to deal with, and this is going to really streamline it. And I, I think that's a major plus to recruit people to come in and do the work. I think that's very true. And I think you've also got to realize that when one of your main resources is the Arkansas Alumni Association, you have to be able to realize they have limited resources too and limited staff. And, and you look at just the few people that are in this room, and then you multiply that times all the people across the United States, that has to you know, that has to be utilized in the best way they can prioritize as well. Okay, so we got to set out in a clear direction. You got to know where you're going, right? A lot of this is not new. You got to set your goals. Hopefully you all have formalized goals. How many of you have a formalized written plan for your organization? Do you follow it? Yes. You look at it pretty, pretty frequently and make sure that every time you're on that decision-making hump, you go, okay, we got to decide, does this fit our plan or not? Yeah, our first couple of <coughs> meetings at the start of the year, we would always address those at the front of the meeting and okay. say, okay, if we're making decisions, let's focus on our mission and goals, and are we meeting those goals when we make that decision? So. Because sometimes I think we get off and we think we're going to do all these great things, and, and, the, and we're like, what are we going to decide? And if we would just look at our purpose, then we're like, oh, this doesn't really fit our purpose. It fits our wants, but not our... Back in July, we <coughs> did an assessment of our half year point to see, okay, how are we doing? Okay, great. So David, they've got a good group. So if your group needs a little help on following an assessment plan and making sure, I mean, seriously, this is what you all ought to do. This should be like beg, borrow, and steal all the time. Work with the people that know what's going on and get ideas because this should not be a competitive competition type of group. Okay, so you got to get your documentation together. You got to get it all. You got to get a plan. So who's going to be involved in your group? Just the board? Just the leaders? Just the president? If it is, it's not going to be very much fun for very many people for very long. Okay? You need to know where are you now, though. If you haven't stopped and just said, I don't care what our plan says, where are we now? 
So do you do assessments? Have you stopped to say, well, it doesn't matter what our plan is, it's nice if we have one, let's look at it, but really, what's going on? Do you know where you are? Because if you're not, you know, maybe you had a great plan, but things have changed and you're not reaching that plan, maybe it's time to reevaluate the plan and to look for the future. And I know we always want to think for the future, but a lot of times what we need to do is see what's happened in the past. You can't just leave the past behind and say, da, da, da. but I know we also have those in all of our groups that we've always done it this way, right? This has always worked. We always have this type of bread. We always have this type of sandwich. We've always, da, 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 da. and this has always been, you know. And that, that's important, and history is important, but we've got to understand what's going on now. Right? And then we can begin to think, what might we do in the future? And I think that's where you all really gain from sharing experiences between and among your groups. Because a lot of people have been doing it for a long time. But that doesn't mean the people that are just getting started don't have some fantastic new and fresh ideas. So here's where they want me to talk about something I, I bet you all have heard before. But we're going to address it because they feel it is important. So we're going to do it. We're going to talk about what does this mean, analyzing the external and internal environment. What lovely task is that? It's something everybody loves. What is this? Don't you love these? How many of y'all have ever done a SWAT before? How many of you just love them? I mean, I love it. Just like I, hear, I love to hear people say, think outside the box. They're just like, I'm like, okay, we've heard that term a lot. I'm done with outside the box. Let's move to think outside the circle. Let's do something a little bit different. Okay. But we're just going to touch on it a little bit because we can't, we don't have the time to do it now, but you can take it forward to your group and possibly, uh, that, that's, what our, that's what our lovely assistant will do, I guess. This is, the, this is their setup. I, my battery power's not low. Don't worry. I'm not going down. So if you'll hit OK, we'll just keep moving a little bit. So certainly a SWOT analysis. You've probably done these in your business organizations and all those kinds of things. And as sort of painful as thinking about it might be, there are some possibilities. But we're going to kind of change it up a little bit. So it's always been strengths of your organization, the weaknesses of your organization, the what? Opportunities, Opportunities you have and the threats. threats. Okay, we're going to look at it a little bit differently. We're going to talk about your icebergs and your islands, okay? We're going to have a little bit of fun with this. We're going to say, what are you headed for? You know, is your planning and the things that you're looking toward and the people that are on your group and the people that are attending your events, are you headed toward a little bit of disaster or unseen threats? Or are you possibly heading to cruise toward that great destination and the fulfillment that you really want your organization to do? And as my lovely assistant plugs us in over there, I see that she's got us all going. We do have this sort of in a handout form. You also have your notebook there to work on. What I would like for you to do truly is working groups. At your table, you can t come and get a book. You can just heads up together and talk about a couple of things. I put just a few generalized questions that may apply. And I hope that you'll take a few minutes to really throw these together and we can bring these back and talk with the alumni group about how you, as these organized structures, are feeling today. So, what are you all good at doing already? Organizing events. Yeah. Okay, what kind of events? Let's be a little bit more specific. Well, we have an annual picnic that we use to fund our scholarship program. Okay. We uh, have banquets that we do in the area to bring people together. Okay. Um, we have volunteer events where we bring a different section of our alumni and to elevate or go towards those types of okay. events. Okay. So you're good at organizing events. Now another component is that if you're not only are you good at organizing things, but are you doing it well? Because that's two different things. One is can we plan it all? The other thing is do the events actually go well? And not from your perspective. In order to evaluate if something goes well, you've got to say, did it go well for those who were the attendees? Because it's great if it goes well for the planners, but the planners are not who we're trying to serve. And following our hopefully this year's big event, we did an assessment again of what went really well at the event and what we could improve upon. Okay. The 
following year. So. And you go back and visit that, right? Because sometimes we forget. Right, right then you're like, oh, that didn't work, okay. But these are our internal things. These are things you can control, right? The internal things that are affecting you, okay. Internally, what kind of things do you, do you all struggle with? Getting people involved. We have lots of people in the Oklahoma City area, but just a very, very small number that are actually coming to our events and, and coming to work in. Okay. follow through once they, yeah. once they say they will do something and then actually staying in touch with them and keeping them on task. Okay. That's, that's always been a problem that something, and things come up. Right. But, you know, um, that's always been something we really have to. Set kind of across the board too? Included. Okay, good. All right. Anybody had some programs that aren't working anymore that maybe it's time to kind of let go of? All right. Uh, charge of the volunteer activities in Dallas. We do real well on this, the school reading program that we have on campus of college. <coughs> Elementary campus. Oh, okay. And, um, and we've, we've done real well with that. And um, we've, we've done real well on getting involved in the veterans with the cemetery up and down flags. So we have, you know, uh, eight or ten events with that a year. However, one thing we're not as good at but we keep saying we want to do, and I keep scheduling events, and sometimes it's just me, is Habitat for Humanity. And those of you that don't know, they have resale stores because people, and we started doing resale stores because it was on the weekends. And still, um, we've expanded it to other groups. One of the big challenges I have is, me personally, is how to work with the new young alumni group, the new parents group, the long existing Greater Dallas Razorback Club watching parties. Oh, okay. Okay, that's evidently all they do, and then the board. Okay. And this year's the first year, well, some of them are new, like, like the parents group is, is sure, that changes. the second year, you know, the same with the alumni group. But still, um, Besides having maybe one person go to their meetings as far as taking that to the next level and having a joint volunteer activity, for example, we just send, tend to send out, here's the calendar of events. Okay. And as far, I would like to see us work better with the other groups because they're, they're just such a small group of okay. us. That, and, and everyone so pooling your resources yeah, more everybody's working and more. would you hand out those things please man? and um, being able to you know fish or cut bait sometimes right when, when something has run its course or people find your larger group of people find it's not something they're going to do saying we're just not going to do it and using your time and your talents and your resources to put that energy into something else and that's hard sometimes because we face that at the Alumni Association ourselves. You may get a few people that complain, why aren't you having this? But you've got to do what you can with what you have. And I think eliminating is the hardest thing to do emotionally in some ways. But it's, a, it's an evaluative process. And if you have that purpose in mind, then that, can, that helps you make a more objective decision as opposed to a more emotional decision when you have to change your programs. But those are internal things. The external then are things that are sometimes more controlled by what's going on outside. So what kind of things, what events are going on, what kind of trends are out there that are favorable? What kind of things can we get on with right now that are sort of, I guess, hip or, or popular or the things that people will attend. If you're talking about like, how are we going to reach the younger kind of folks, what kind of things going to reach them, we probably can't do what we did 15 or 20 years ago because we can't always do it that way, right? Just like, um, you know, I hear this sometimes with organizations or, or church even, it's like we can't do the same music we did 20 years ago because our audience is not the same now. It may not be the way everybody likes it, but we have to stay with what's favorable and with what's trendy because we've got to think of the audience now and then the audience five years from now. You know, who are we trying to get on board now to reach in the future? So are you thinking about what's out in the environment that you cannot control but that you can mold your programs to? 
And that's also why you need some younger, not necessarily in age, but younger into your organization that can bring in that sort of information. And you have to be real open-minded. Because your first thought sometimes is like, what? I don't think we can do that. But maybe you can. Anybody had some really what you thought were crazy ideas brought to your board or your group? I don't know about crazy, but uh, we've been doing watch parties for a while at the, at the Dallas Alumni Board. And, and they've been somewhat successful with 10 to 20 people at a location. We kind of turned that over to our new young alumni board, and they had their first watch party a couple of weekends ago. And uh, at 175 people at that watch party, they started turning people away. Well, what did they do differently? It was their communication. They used Twitter. They used the, all the social medias, and they got everybody to show up, and, and they were never able to do that. And so now they've taken over. And you had to relinquish a little control, didn't you? Yeah, Probably. We basically just dropped it in the laps after that and said, well, yep, it's all yours. They don't even have laps because they never sit down, do they? You're just like, whoo, get it on the fly there. But what a rewarding result that was, right? How many, I bet you like calling up saying, we didn't have a hard time, but people at our event. Yeah, when the place complains that they had to pull in extra workers just to take oh, care of Oh, darn. Them, yeah. Right? So will you continue to let them sort of oh, roll with that? And then you all can focus on something else if you want to. Anybody else? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go Read it and then we'll come. Kind of a far out thing, but we had this uh, event uh, called Drinking with the Enemy and it's all the South East Conference alumni <laughs> groups in Oklahoma City. <laughs> so, it's just a, a social thing. I I don't drink, so I haven't even been to it. So I, okay, there's another thing. If somebody reads an event and they think, that doesn't fit me, you've got to make sure you mark it as, if you don't drink, you can also do this or something, right? Okay. Because we make decisions, don't we? When we read an event, does that fit me or not? Yeah. And actually, I could go. I well, right, right, right. <laughs> but I'm just thinking, you do make it, you read about an event and you think, will that work for me or not? Do I fit in that group? But it's a way for us to, you know, kind of get some camaraderie among the, the different groups in Oklahoma City. And, okay. We're all fairly small. You know, in terms of membership that are active, there's a lot that aren't active in the area. But so One more here. Sorry, we're gonna, we don't have a lot of time. Yes. This may not be the right time, but we're cons this is a concern, but I see it as an opportunity, so okay. I think it should be brought up now. We're thinking about when people go, because we have a successful watch party system, and we're thinking that when we go to just searching hogs, it's not going to be pulling us up. Are we going to be able to have our alumni regions, affiliates, things that are on our Arkansas alumni website so they could look that up and see that? Because I've traveled all over the United States for six years, and I was from New York to Newport Beach, California to Florida, and I always tried to find Arkansas people, and I always did it through Razorback searches, and I still had frustration in finding people. I, I think this would be an ideal opportunity for us to have something on the website. Um, or is there something, and I just don't know it, and I haven't looked. Well, okay. and then as far as your chapter, what? I'm with Wichita. Okay. Um, I believe you guys have a page right now. We have a, we have a page, but I think we're going to have to change it due to some of the things okay. that you're saying are going to be there, different. There is a consolidated watch party page. Now. There is a page yeah. now? You can go by it. You can look at it by state and then by city. Okay, see, I, so okay. we're doing that, and I didn't know it. That's why I said this Good. may be stupid right. for me. No, it's not. I mean, this is what you need to get out of this day is lots of questions and, I, and answers. I think it works really well. I mean, our last watch party, we had a gentleman that showed up, and he said he's actually from Dallas. He was coming back from D.C. and was spending the weekend in Memphis, and he went to that page and found yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't have found it any other way had it not yeah. been the consolidated I, page. I don't know if you guys have noticed, we're pushing that out everywhere. We're trying to get people involved. And if you have a Facebook page, yeah. you know, go out, find people in your area that are graduates and say, hey, join our page or like them. Okay. One more comment on that. Well, I was going to say, taking advantage of an opportunity several years ago, one of our board members' son was the commander of the National Guard uh, in our area that was mobilized to Iraq. And we helped the parents' club of the parents that was left behind 
we sent them off to Iraq with the little embroidered hogs that they used to get. Yes. Sign flag, and they flew it when they were there. And but we helped take care of the people that were left behind. Yeah. We had we sent them to the movies. We had pool parties. We had different things by helping the the parents club that was already joined, but we helped them do things. See, that's a great audience. That wasn't mentioned. We talked about students. We talked about, you know, but there's a unique niche audience that that's a great thing to share and talk about. What an emotional appeal I'm sure that is. You know, a lasting emotional mark. That's great. And then the threats. What kind of things are happening in the environment that you cannot control, but that may be affecting how you meet or if you meet or what's going on in that. So a SWAT takes a bit of time, but if you do this within your organization and you really focus on this, then these points can help you to build your documentation looking in that then where can we go based upon what's our limits and what do we have as resources. We can talk about what are our needs and priorities, what are our problems. Hopefully you look like some of these chapters and you have a three to five year plan that doesn't stay stagnant. You have a plan, you revisit it every six months, that's great. You update it though and say what works and what doesn't. Always keep track of what doesn't work because you're not there anymore and people need to know you tried it three years ago and it didn't work and not only that it didn't work but why at that time because maybe you do bring it back in a few years because something has changed and all you needed was that small change to make it a successful event. You know really I think one of the things is we've got to be limited in what we're trying to accomplish. You know, we can't all try to have six or eight goals that you're going to get every year. Be good at what you do. Be outstanding at those two or three things that you truly focus on. And make them be relevant to your chapter and to your needs. Be real clear about it, but make sure that they're measurable. Just don't say, we're going to have a happy group of alumni. Because happy is not something that you can go out and say is really measurable, right? Because that's not actually something you can say for each people. Okay? And then plan what you're going to do. Gauge your audience. And remember, it's not who's coming now, but it's who are we going to get in the future? Who do we want to draw from to have the most effective events? Because it may be that it's not what you've always done in the past. And that sometimes is hard for us. Evaluate what you've done. And if at all possible, who do you really need to be talking to? Who doesn't come? That's probably the hardest ones to reach, but that's who can tell you why they are not coming. Is it the time? Is it the event? Is it the what's going on at the event? Is it what's being offered? What's holding them back? Because it's like preaching to the choir when the people that all come and you say, what's wrong with this event? They're all going to say, nothing, this is a great event, I'm here, what, right? So it's talk to the ones that aren't coming. Maybe it's just the time in their life. Maybe they've just got too many things going on and it's not that they're not there in spirit. You know, maybe that's Something you need to have is that I support you in spirit. Maybe the people that can't be there can just send an email greeting or a tweet or a tweet or whatever you call them at that time during the event so that they're with you in spirit and they feel that they're somewhat engaged even if they can't be there at that time. Maybe that's what we need to figure out how to do is engaging, I don't know, I'm just coming up with something at this moment that, that they can engage without being there physically and know that you want them to be there and that they would be there if they could so that the time that they can they're ready to jump on board. So it's either be here or not. One thing that we've already seen uh, reaping benefits this year is we moved our watch parties from a location previously that it permitted smoking and was adult uh -huh. over a certain age. And we wanted to move it to a more family friendly environment. So we moved it to a Buffalo Wild Wings and we're, we're already seeing people showing up with their kids. And or they can come and go. They've got a family yeah. event or a soccer game and they've got to be 30 minutes late. Well, who wants to come in 30 minutes late at an official event or have to leave, you know, a little bit early because they, you know, right. Trying to focus on why maybe some non-attendees are not coming. That, what, that led maybe they can't that commit to the whole time or maybe, you know, they don't want to get a babysitter. They want it to be a family event. See, good thinking, good thinking. Okay. Get your plan in place and cross plan. So when we talk about cross planning, who does that involve? all your other organizations, all the other people that are doing the similar things. You talked about doing this with some of the other groups in the area. And it, doesn't it seem like it would really be an ideal situation if all our little Razorback type groups could all get together? But we know from reality that doesn't always work. But we don't want to give up, do we? You know, but when possible, 
if you can get together and do some cross planning that's great follow some type of communication and marketing plan do you all have separate from your what we're going to do every year a plan of how we get the information out is it more than mail and email okay what's mail what's mail there are a few people that still like it and it's expensive right but for some people, you're not going to reach them unless it's a physical piece of mail that arrives in their mailbox that's hands-on. A postcard. A postcard. Mm -hmm. But something tangible, right? Well, we've done it because they've done it for us, but that's the point to stop. Because of the resource issue, exactly. right? Right. And the cost and the amount of people there yeah. are to do that. Yeah. So we got to think of another way, don't we? Okay. But having a plan. How many times are we going to try this? How many times will we try to reach someone with a physical piece of something? before we say this is your last piece or how many times do we get a rejected email or how many you know what are we going to do how many phone calls can we make how many personal appeals can we make those are tough decisions but if you decide it's that important to your group and you feel like those personal relationships are what's going to do it then maybe that's the way you go okay so we're going to arrive in port what are you going to do You've got to have a plan. It's got to be committed to, not just by you and not just by the people on your board, but you need to share that plan with the people that are coming to your meetings. They've got to know what's the point of this whole organization. Are we just a social group or is there a bigger issue at plan? Who is responsible? Does everybody have a responsibility? Because volunteers need to feel engaged or they're going to go somewhere that they feel engaged. I mean, there, there are zillions of classes on this. There are degrees in working with volunteers. This is not just we're making this up because we know it. This is a degreed science in volunteers and management and that's just how volunteers are and I'm sure you've had personal experiences with that. How's it going to happen? What's our plan? What's in place? Who's going to move first? What are we going to do? What resources do you need? You need people. You need human live bodies to accomplish this both in the planning and in the making it happen. You have to have physical resources, right? A big enough venue, a larger place to have it. You, you have to have a convening place of some kind, right? And then you do have to have financial resources. I mean, we're just kidding ourselves if we say this doesn't cost us something. So you have to take all those things into plan and into mind. And then you need to know ahead of time, what are we setting up as a success? It's real easy at the end to say, yeah, it was successful. I think it was. Everybody had a good time or whatever. But really, to know success is to su set that point up ahead of time. We're going to give ourselves a grade of A if these things happen. This many new people, this much engagement, these new addresses, this many memberships, such and such, this much money for our scholarship drive. Then you do your evaluation to determine if you hit it. Because if you're only measuring your success after the event was over, you may be sort of cutting yourself short and not reaching as far as you need to. So what's success going to look like before the event ever starts? And then evaluate it, write it down, and go back and reach it later. And don't rely on your memory. Anybody ever been on a vacation? Yes, or somewhere? And you didn't take a single picture, or you lost your camera, or whatever, and you didn't bring anything back? How much do you remember of it? The other day, our friends, um, across the street we're like oh we went to this and we're like yeah we went to Alaska whatever and like oh we'd like to see your stuff you know so that's been about three or four summers ago so I went out and I found my DVD where I'd put all the slides on it to music all that got out and they came over so we, we had one of those slideshow nights you know it was like hilarious so I was like no you know we had like hundreds of slides same thing we went to Scotland you take thousands of pictures but you know for the average person you got to condense it down you know because they don't really want to see everything you did all day long so it's about a 30 minute show but you know we sat down and watched it with them our little 30 minute and my husband and I were like did you remember that? We were like, we, there is so much we had forgotten just in the condensed version of things that we did or things that we saw because, you know, life kind of goes on. And so don't rely on your memory. Take pictures, take notes, write it down, talk to the people right then, get the evaluation. Don't wait till the next meeting. Take those things right then because evaluation formally is important. Keep records of that because they need to be passed on. History is important. Look at them when you're planning for the future. And if you have all of these things in place, I really think you're going to be successful. And I truly think 
that when we all adjust to these changes that are in place that you will truly see if you're looking for the positives you're going to see major improvements and we're all going to travel really well together whatever our destination okay and now I we have a little bit few minutes left I think so. well maybe a minute you're the boss okay then I would like you just to take this last few minutes just for open questions either to me or share time for each other because you are the most important part and the more interaction you have in this day I think the more successful you'll find this day to be and I want to thank you for just letting me have a little bit of time with you I, I wanted to ask the other groups if they kind of piggyback with the uh, Razorback clubs we have the biggest one probably in the state of Arkansas in Fort Smith and hundreds and hundreds of people go I'm like the one of four women that go and I want to have a table there for the WAG, for Western Arkansas chapter. And just, you know, but I've got a, it's a boys club and I've got to go and, you know, do that, work that. But I just wondered if that's, because that is such a strong base okay. in so many cities. So we have an answer? So, so many? We, well, my, I'm from a small town, so our, our resources are limited. So, but we do, we work with the Razorback Club to do Hog Bash, which is their fundraising mm -hmm. in, in our area. And we basically do the work and they help us financially through that. But, so we, we partner really well with them, but we're, we're in a unique situation because we have so many limited people that, yeah. um, so. Well, and I'm in Little Rock. <laughs> it's not the same. It's a little tough. Well, and, and I haven't approached that yet, so that's why I was asking. I really want to go to their board and see if there's a way that we can partner. And I know, I, I'm kind of feeling that too. I'm kind of getting that too because it's a well established club. Yeah, for decades and decades of things. Yeah. We've had a well established Razorback club in Tulsa, and we've just organized our alumni association thing, but we've, both groups are committed to working together. And when they have an event, they ask our president to get up at the end and say a few words. Oh, that's and then when we have an event, we ask their president to get up and say See, a few words. I think words. the key so, is that you're out of state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's very, very yeah. different. You guys yeah. feel like it's you against yeah. the rest of the world. Yeah. You know, you're against UT <laughs> and OSU and OU and, you know. And the Dallas people feel yeah. that, you know. It's true, because we work with the different Dallas. different in Arkansas. Yeah. The Dallas guy comes yes. to our board every day. Almost every time. Yeah, that's, we have yeah. that's yeah. awesome. Within the state, but it's going to be but different. In you're right. The big difference is that in Dallas and probably everywhere, the Razorback Club is really an athletic booster club. Yes. And they're really into it, as we all are. So we're a part of that because we're into it too. But what we do as the Alumni Association, though, is we support the university and the students academically and all the other things surrounding the university, not just athletics. Yeah. And so that just gives us a whole different focus. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's a joint crossover group, but we've got a whole different focus. And we just now feel like we're, we're getting a lot more people involved because we've got some of the young people have caught fire, as he mentioned, with the watch parties. So, you know, it, it's, you just have to focus on what we do, which is support the university, not just athletics. Well, and our group hosts watch parties, and they don't. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, well, well we could, if we get a coach to come down, we could have a gazillion people there. If we get an academia type, we, we have to cancel because nobody shows up. I mean, it's sad. And I'm a little rock. I mean, it's just the way it is. We, honestly, we might have 10 people, and we're all on the board. <laughs> well, and, while well, we're committed to working together, we thought it was interesting at their big event in March, we offered them our alumni association table toppers like we had in the other room. Mm -hmm. We put them out and they, they had us put all of those, uh, fine, you know, the spot, you've been spotted cards out and everything. And people got there from the, from Tulsa, from, I mean, from Fayetteville, from the Razorback Foundation and made us take the table toppers off. We thought that was rude. So now on our SWAT, is that an external thread or an, you know, where are we? I was just like, we're all for the same school. What? Yeah, why are we, that, why are we, we pitting against each other? That's it's a major
because they wanted to look yeah. Yeah. That is a session within itself, probably, right? Not for the camera. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? Well, I don't want to interrupt your donut time or whatever's coming next, lunch, I think. But I do thank all of you. And if there's any way that we can help you in the continued future as you work through your organizations or your plans, mostly I would say rely on each other. Also, don't be afraid to reach out to other chapter folks. It doesn't have to be a president, right? It, doesn't have to, it has to be anybody that you meet today. Make sure you make those connections. And thank you for being here. Appreciate you.